Uh, morning, guys. Uh, name is Samson, and uh, welcome to today's market snapshot session. We have quite a lot to unpack. Possibly, uh, it's going to define how we trade for the year, and some of those long-term trends are going to be easier to spot once we have a clear understanding of what we need to do. So let me just set this up in a minute and then we can start. So we have a lot that happened this week and I think it's good if we went through unpacking everything so that we know where we stand and what we need to do. So I'm just trying to share. Okay, yeah, so this week we had uh, quite a number of meetings. We had uh, the Fed, had uh, ICB, and we had the Bank of England also and uh, Swiss National Bank. So we'll try and unpack as much as we can in the session. Are we going to buy Europe? Yeah, we'll discuss that also. We need to be discussing that. So at the moment, first, it's important to understand that we are at a pivotal moment. Some banks might start shifting policy, uh, either being or starting to talk ab about a loose policy and other banks might still be maintaining. So point is we'll try and see what currencies have uh, tight policies and then try to pair them with currencies that have weak policy. And that's going to guide us with the trend or the direction for the whole of 2024 or the better part of it. So going to start us off with the Fed. We had a meeting on uh, Wednesday, 13th, and it came out, uh, first of they held the rates, and we can just go through this statement a bit um, over here. So yeah, so this was the press release and then there was a meeting afterwards. There was nothing much or dramatic Okay. Yeah, so there was nothing quite dramatic. Uh, I've gotten your message, Apollo. Uh, hopefully, you can also look at that. I'll, but I'll have to like spend some time and just uh, pull up those tabs for futures. Anyways, um, okay, so there was nothing dramatic on the statement. However, there was a bit of drama in the press conference. So just can just go through the statement. The part of this goal, the committee decided to maintain a target uh, between a uh, rate at five and a quarter and five and a half percent. Remember the current rate as is, is, uh, what is it? It's 5%. Federal funds rate is 5.5%. And you can compare here with the other rates. So the US is among the highest, followed by the pound, and then the euro and Canadian. Yeah. So, um, so in addition, the committee will continue reducing uh, holdings of treasury. This is very important. Uh, so remember them reducing treasury. Remember during the pandemic, there was a lot of buying of treasury securities. And when the US government starts buying treasuries, they release a lot of cash in the economy and sort of the value of the dollar starts to go down. But when they're reducing whatever they had bought, that means they're doing the opposite and they're mopping up liquidity. So this is still there. But she'll talk about it. The committee is strongly committed to returning inflation to its 2%. That's okay. So uh, in assessing the appropriateness of monetary policy, committee will uh, monitor the implications of incoming information from the economic outlook. This is a normal communication. The committee will be prepared to adjust the stance of monetary policy as appropriate. Uh, this is also okay. Uh, yeah, so remember why you usually just trade non farm and inflation. The committee assessments will take into account a wide range of information, including readings on labor market conditions and inflation pressures and inflation expectations. Yeah, and financial market, uh, international, financial and international developments. So usually that's why you usually focus so much on labor market and inflation. Yeah, when you look at other things like bonds, and the like. So this was very okay until it came to the press conference itself. And I think we can move on to this article here by the Financial Times. Uh, can be able to decode a bit of that. Yeah. So first off, the summary. 
uh, Federal Reserve triggers market rally as it signals interest rates cuts in 2024. Yeah. So that was the key highlight and why uh, a lot of stocks and even the index rallied on Wednesday. So let's just break down uh, what happened and what transpired. So the Fed held interest rates at uh, where they were 5.5% alongside new forecasts from the central bank officials pointing to a 75 basis point worth of cuts next year. So from the current 5.5% towards the end of next year, we might see it going back to maybe 4.5, 4.75% there. And that's huge news. Remember, the market was expecting that the Fed is going to talk about higher for longer. We are not going to start considering cuts. But this is a change of tone with the Fed. Yeah. The decision uh, open market committee alongside uh, showed most officials, now this is a statement here, most officials expected rates will end at 4.5 to 4.75%. So it's the beginning of cuts. Yeah. And that means a very weak uh, US dollar going forward as the market prices in these uh, information. Yeah. So officials expect rates to fall even lower in 2025 with most officials forecasting that they would uh, end up between 3.5 and that, yeah. So a uh, dot plot is down here. They also have a dot plot here. So a dot plot just shows uh, among the committee members where they think rates should be, yeah. So these are all the committee members and most of them by the end of 2023, it's around 5.5, which is where it is. But by September, oh wait, this is, uh, it should be 2024. Let me just move this here. Uh, does this one have a, yeah, this one has a dot plot. Yeah. Now you can see from this dot plot where most members are anticipating the funds rate to be. Remember they have to vote for raising the rates or lowering the rates. And all the committee members need to be in agreement before rates are lowered or raised. So, by getting different opinions of different committee members, you can sort of start to have an idea of where things might be heading to. And you can see the more we go into 2024, 2025, more members are thinking rates will be lower. So maybe 5, 4.5, 4. So more members are starting to anticipate lower rates in the long run. Yeah. And this is why uh, the dollar has been uh, very weak. Now, the thing is, Yes, we know the dollar is weakening, but it's weakening against what? Yeah, we need to find a very good contender, a currency that's going to be strong enough so that you can pay it against the dollar to find your place, maybe for the following week or next week. And that's why even before you go to this currency strength meter, uh, on on I think the following day, we had the BOE coming in. Was it the ECB? Just a minute. So that was on uh, Wednesday, we had the FOMC. I'm going to skip the SNB for now. Then we had the uh, Monetary Policy Committee. So let's have a look at that uh, right now. So it was a very interesting week and it's very easy to know the flow that you need to be in for 20, 2024. Okay, so um, now uh, we said we need to find a strong currency to pair with a dollar so that we have good trend. And one of the currencies was uh, clearly uh, pound. So if we just go through the meeting, the, the statement from uh, the Bank of England here, the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee says, oh, there's that. Three members preferred, now here, uh, the MPC voted a majority, 6-3, to maintain the bank rate at 5.2 percent now remember you have to vote the members have to vote for this if you go back to here the expectation was at least uh seven members maintain the hike and only two, two uh want to hike but three members wanted to hike instead of two so it means it's still a slightly a big chunk or a good chunk of members still want to raise high uh, interest rates from where they are at 5.25. They're saying three members preferred to increase 
bank rates by 0.25%. That means an even stronger uh, pound. Okay, so uh, in the November report, the projections were this. Well, okay, in the November report, the GDP was expected to be broadly flat. So they're, they're, they're already comfortable with the idea that the economy is not growing at the moment. Uh, comment on reducing bonds holding by the Fed. Yeah, so actually, I've already talked about the Fed. So now I'm going to talk about uh, Bank of England. But the Fed, basically, because they were doing easing, they've still said they're going to be tightening. That is, they're going to be reducing their balance sheet. Remember, reducing the balance sheets means mopping up liquidity. But in light of what they have commented yesterday on, on Wednesday, then it's a much more... It takes precedence of... Uh, what they're doing on the balance sheet at the moment. I think the market is just looking at where interest rates are heading to. So GDP was expected to be broadly flat. Uh, they've kind of are okay with that, but this is important here. They uh, anticipate, uh, so the rates for England are going to be five and a quarter percent until 2024 and gradually then decline to. So these are the conditions they're using to forecast everything else and if this is the assumption and going by this assumption you're going to see that uh they're going to have uh the highest threats if the fed starts cutting and the boe still maintains at 5.25 the uk is going to have higher rates than uh any other place yeah that's one thing you need to note and that's why the pound has been strengthening a lot of late and that's why uh wednesday we had a very sharp move thursday we've had a very sharp move on gbp usd why because if going by this then we should be seeing uh them being a bit more adamant uh with regards to just keeping them at 5.2 percent uh, the committee continued to judge risks uh such that this and uh, inflation was at 2.2 percent and one point uh okay so Projection for CPI for them. Remember, they're trying to get it back to target, but this is within one year. So probably 2025 is when you're going to see, that's what they're thinking, 2.2% uh, inflation. So until then, they're probably going to hold high rates for long. Uh, okay, so since the NPC's previous meeting, okay, now we can just have a look at GDP USD before we continue on this chart. Uh -huh. Okay, so GBP USD. Remember, a few weeks ago we said uh, the dollar is going to be weak, and we gave the reasons why. Uh, that is, the Fed is probably going to start cutting earlier than any of these other central banks. Yeah, and that has been the case. I remember when you first talked about that, uh, had that discussion, the market was here, and we said we will be looking for buying opportunities during the pullback that was a few weeks ago and finally that pullback has happened and we are back up so this is how things are looking at the moment this is the four hour chart gbp usd and we have this strong uptrend over here so if i go to the hourly chart when we had the the fed meeting on tuesday on wednesday this was the move and then on thursday this was the move by the Bank of England. So the market is trying to price in the fact that dollar is going to be weak, pound is going to be strong for twenty for the for for the time being, yeah. And that means also we should be anticipating a continuation of this trend. So it's going to be very dangerous to try and okay. You can play these imbalances over here. Of course, the imbalances on this uh, move. Let me just delete this. Let's just look at, let's mark out everything first before we continue. So we'll look at each currency one by one. So there's that imbalance, and then there's this block over here. Like that, and if you go to the one hour, uh, one hour like that, we have, if you're trying to play this really short term, we have laws of Asian session at this point over here. If, if that's a short term play you want to take advantage of, which is also a very likely situation, the market could do this 
check out the stops and the pending orders over here and then continue upwards because this is a equal loss over here so that's a possibility you could see or in the event you see a deeper pullback then these areas down here so let me go back to the h1 chart these areas uh, over here could be interesting points but i highly doubt we will see market falling this deep uh, and if it does then those those are good opportunities to look for uh, a continuation of this uh, trend. Yeah, that's GBP USD. We've given out the, the fundamental reasons why you said uh, we expect UK rates to be higher for longer. Remember, interest rates make currencies uh, stronger. And since the Fed on Wednesday acknowledged that they might start cutting, then it makes obvious sense why the pound will start being stronger and the dollar weakening, and that's an uptrend. And again, we say this from when it was, I think, breaking this point over here. Yeah, that we sh towards the end of the year, and based on, because they started being very dovish, I think was it on November or October, when they first commented that we might start uh, easing a bit, and that caused this initial rally. I think it's this rally over here. Oh, let's look at the daily. It's easier. Yeah, on the daily, it's clearer. This change in trend over here was easily caused by when they started being dovish the first time. And now it's like being reinforced with another push upwards. So that's very important to look at. GBP USD. So going into 2024, you'll probably be just looking for opportunities to trade the trend higher. Yeah, there is every fundamental justification to do so. Now it's only the technicals that you need to watch out while you play this higher, yeah. Uh, okay, I think we've covered that. Let's go to another interesting meeting that happened this week, and that was the ECB meeting. So let me just open that. Let me open that a minute, just a minute. So initially, we were speculating that the BOE will hold, or the UK will hold interest rates uh for longer than the ecb but from the comments yesterday it's, it's going to be a very hard game trying to understand who is going to start cutting first between uh, the eurozone and between the ecb and the bank of england it's going to be very tough especially in light of yesterday's comments so let's look at that so this was the statement from the ecb okay uh huh. So yeah, the governing council decided to keep uh, that. Let me just zoom this one in. Okay, according to the Euro system staff, projections for the Euro area inflation is expected to decline gradually in the course of next year before approaching uh, the two percent target. Yeah. Overall, expect headline inflation to average that in 2023 and 2.7% in 2024. And then finally, it's going to get back to target at around 2025 or 2026. Compared with the September staff projection, this amounts to a downwards revision, especially for 2024. Now that comment over there is why I think uh, ECB might revise again downwards and maybe be the first ones to start cutting. Why? Because their, their, their initial language here, uh, according to the Eurostaff system, inflation is expected. Yeah, inflation is expected to decline gradually over the course of next year. This is completely different from what they've been saying. They've been saying we expect inflation to be elevated, to remain elevated next year. Inflation is still going to be high. And now they have changed the tone and they think this is going to start declining gradually over next year, which is a good sign if you're looking for euro weakness but doesn't still uh is not still enough to negate what they said yesterday uh which is uh where is it where is it uh, the past threat increases continue to be transmitted forcefully uh dampening demand beyond that the economy is expected to do that hero systems have therefore see growth growing at that uh just a minute, let me look for that statement. Yeah, here. 
Based on its current assessment, the Governing Council considers the key ECB rates at levels are at levels that uh, maintained for sufficiently long duration will make substantial contribution to this goal. Now, this tells you two things. Number one, probably rates have peaked also for ECB. But number two, and most importantly, is their intentions to maintain this high rate for a better part of next year. Yeah. So unlike what we've seen with the Fed, these guys are going to also maintain rates. They're not going to start thinking of cutting uh, anytime soon. That also provides a bull case for euro. Yeah. Uh, the governing council will continue to follow the data dependent approach. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Yeah, and then this PEP and uh, asset purchase program that Apollo asking about. Yeah, so this one is more of mopping up liquidity. Remember during the pandemic, we had um, asset purchases. So an asset purchase program is where they start buying treasuries. And when the government buys treasuries, you're exchanging it for cash. And now that cash is circulating in the economy. So they had to do that to sustain the economy during the pandemic. Now they're doing the reversal, uh, which is reducing the PEP portfolio by 7.5 billion per month on average. So they're just trying to mop up that excess liquidity that they had during the pandemic and 2021 and all that. Yeah. So most importantly is the trajectory for interest rates and the expectations for inflation which is what we are focusing on. But the, yeah, so this is the asset purchase program. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically they're just mopping up liquidity. This seems to be continuing, but the more important thing is this. Now, I, I don't think they would want to start cutting rates before they are done with this. So this will probably have to be done first. They have to finish this program before they start, because it will be counterintuitive when you are cutting rates, but then again, you're mopping up liquidity. Yeah. So based on this, let's look at the chart for Euro USD now. Uh, so that's Euro USD over here. Yeah, same story here. I remember two, three weeks ago, we said we expect a bull case for Euro USD. We did have uh, a very deep pullback. Even now you're seeing uh, pullbacks. Just a minute. Yeah, so we did have very deep pullbacks. So by the time we were anticipating uh, pullbacks, the market dropped to this point. And then I remember also it dropped to this point over here. So there are those levels we were looking at. I think I had marked them in the previous videos. And then it eventually came back to this daily zone over here. And that's where the meeting happened. So luckily it coincided with the meeting. Then you've had this upwards push. So we should expect levels to be maintained, uh, to remain elevated. Yeah. So again, same thing with the pound. If you want a really risky trade, look at the Asian laws and see if there's something there for you. Otherwise, you can wait for deeper pullbacks for you to start looking for buying opportunities. That's probably a, a much safer play. The only risk to that is the market might not come necessarily come down all the way here before going up. So it's up to you to decide how risky you want to play this out. But for the long run, we should expect uh, should expect some uh, an uptrend rather. Sorry, so for the long run, we do expect an uptrend to continue, and and that's going to be the case at least maybe until the next meeting or maybe until, until the next major data releases are, are out. But for now, the market has set the trend and that's what we'll be looking to follow. Okay, now a few other assets before we go to, uh, before we go to uh, USDJPY, which is my main uh, concern for, for 2024. Let's first look at Euro GBP. So you see, it's becoming harder to predict uh, the direction of Euro GBP because both of them are now showing signs of uh, maintaining higher for longer. Yeah? So there's this sideways movement because the market is still trying to decode. Probably if we have more data, such uh, with inflation and employment, then we can be able to decode which economy is doing better and which economy is more likely to start cutting rates. So... This one is going to be a tricky play uh, going forward. So it's good to 
to try and just be careful with it. Yeah, same thing with uh, XAU USD or gold. Again, uh, yes, we are above 2000, but we need to have to justify gold going, continuing to go up. We need a lot of uh, reasons for it to continue going up. So, my 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 estimate is that if we are not going to go sideways from here, then we'll have a very weekly uptrend because gold above two thousand is very rare. It's going to it does happen, but once in a while. So I don't know how sustained this move is going to be, in my opinion, unless there is more data on that. But for now, uh, just having an eye on that and not really being active here because. The fundamentals are not they're 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 there, but I don't know. Two thousand for me is a bit too expensive for gold, so I'll just wait this one out. If you're choosing to to play this one, also same reason, dollar is weakening, so anticipation is probably a move higher makes more sense. But again, gold above two thousand for me is uh, quite interesting. I don't think I'm going to participate in that. Okay. Um, next chat is uh, the stocks, S and P five hundred mainly, and Nasdaq. Remember what we said a month ago that towards the end of the year, most of the times we witness a stock rally, and that's when you Google seasonality of charts, it's going to be very apparent, and that has just been reinforced with the Fed meeting on Wednesday here. Yeah? So if I go to the hourly chart, you can see that on Wednesday we had this push from that reaction of the Fed meeting. And it seems like the, we still have some steam to go upwards. Uh, and where could uh, we find a good target? If you look at the daily, let me just zoom this out. We are kind of close to reaching all-time highs for S&P. This was when? This was uh, January 2022. Yeah. So we are kind of close to, and it might even get there. You know how the market usually has memory, uh, tries and replicates past events. So January 2022, the start of January, we were already at 480, 4,800, yeah? So maybe by January, we'll be back there. Who knows? But market conditions are proving to be the case. I'm making a very strong that we might be approaching these levels again, even before January or by January if everything remains constant as is at the moment yeah okay now to the main play of the day french pmi has come weaker and germany is expected this cause for uh okay french pmi weaker yeah so now that we know like the main trajectories these other news announcements are good for something like pullbacks if you're looking for a pullback a proper pullback Negative news is going to do it for you. Yeah. But then the main play, you're still in an uptrend. So something like PMI, you can use it to look for a proper pullback in the market and then take that opportunity to start looking for where can I play with the trend again? Yeah. So that's how I'd look at it. I wouldn't look at PMI and start saying, okay, now the trend is changing. We are going downwards. Yeah. Um, it just serves as an opportunity for you to look for uh, proper pullbacks in the market, especially right now because the market is overbought. I think that's a good opportunity for you to see, okay, so if you're pulling back, where are the optimal levels for buyers to come back into the market? Yeah, there's usually the main news you look at, which is inflation and uh, employment figures, and then these other news that you use to play in line with the global or macro uh, trends that are occurring. So PMI will be a good opportunity to look for pullbacks. Okay, so main contender of the day is USD JPY. And we already know what the monetary policy for, for US is, uh, or the expectations that is for 2024. But let's have a look at Japan for a bit. Uh, just a minute, let me see which tabs I have for BOJ. Just, just a minute, let me look for this. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Okay, so these are based on rumors, but oh well. Uh, okay. I think I have to remove my ad block. Uh, just a minute. Uh, okay. Okay, so the Bank of Japan, let's look at it. This is Reuters. A BOJ to phase out loose monetary policy in January over 20 uh, in January. As early as January. Okay, now just let's go back to this USDJPY chart over here. And remember what happened the whole of... Uh, Let's even zoom further out. This entire move over here. From here to here. Yeah. So let me just remove this. Yeah, so this entire move over here was caused by uh, two things. Number one, Japan had a loose monetary policy uh, regime. That means they were still, was it buying bonds? They were still trying to maintain the yield curve and that was really affecting the currency. And that's why the currency really weakened the period of 2021 all the way till uh, last year. Yeah, the currency was really weak. And at the same time, these other countries were in a tight monetary policy situation. So Jap the Bank of Japan was the only bank in the major economies that was doing the opposite of what ECB was doing, BOE was doing, and uh, yeah, these are the banks, these national banks. Now it seems as though the opposite is happening. Yeah, here they are saying, uh, where is it? Let me just go back to this. Here they are saying, uh, some economists are starting to think they will unwind on this ultra loose monetary policy. In general, that means they'll start having somewhat tighter conditions in the market. Yeah, remember what these other banks are now starting to do. They are starting to have loose monetary policy by cutting rates. So it seems as though the script is inversing between the BOJ and these other banks. And that could possibly mean an entire correction back down. Yeah, because now they are having an opposite uh, policy to what we are seeing with uh, these other banks. Yeah, I hope that makes sense uh, as at the moment. So if the BOJ is now doing the opposite, it's having tight policy when the Fed is having loose policy, then now the Japanese yen should be stronger. And that's why uh, we had a few traders taking long-term uh, shots on USDJPY to hold for the rest of the year. Yeah. Now, it's not yet confirmed because these, these are still polls, but if it happens, and the market is already running on that uh, rumor, if it happens, then we should see a huge reversal in uh, the Japanese yen specifically, just based on those fundamentals, yeah? Uh, so yeah, the Bank of Japan will begin to unwind its, I hope you can see here, will begin to unwind its ultra-loose monetary policy as early as January, uh, more than a fifth of economists in a Reuters poll said, uh, heightening expectations, the controversial policy era is near an end, yeah? And then uh, a global outlier, yeah. So they're calling Japan a global outlier because they've been doing the opposite of what these other banks are doing. The BOJ is likely to end the year as one of the world's most dovish. Uh, the economists are predicting it will start hiking interest rates soon, yeah? So if Japan is now hiking, and the other countries are cutting, then the whole script is going to, to flip and we might start seeing a, a downtrend in USDJPY, which is a good thing for trend traders. Central banks in other developed countries, on the other hand, have paused rate hikes and are even preparing to deliver cuts. Yeah, so I hope that explains the play. So going forward, USDJPY is a very interesting pair to look at. Remember, it ranged for the longest time because of uncertainty, but now we sort of have a very clear 
expectation of how things might go. This is the daily chart. We've been dropping ever since the rumors started. And we might see maybe the next target being at 140. If not, we'd be looking for pullbacks and just trading uh, this trend downwards as is. Yeah. Okay. Now on to the questions. Uh, Eldorat of Expressa Office, you tuned in. Nice one. Uh, I see a good bear market run in USD, Norwegian. Yeah. So we discussed this a kind of two weeks ago uh, with regards to commodity currencies in that if we start seeing an improvement in the global economy if we start seeing an improvement in the global economy then commodity currencies should clearly be outperforming uh, the US dollar and that means uh, things like the Norwegian krona things like uh, Australian dollar those are good contenders in a loose in a in a regime where the Fed is having loose policy, so that should be the case for the better part of the year. And guys, it's also okay to trade long term. You don't have to be a day trader. If you can trade fundamentals long term, then it's way easier uh, to just know the overall direction of the market. Yeah, so that's probably also another interesting uh, play to look at: USD, Norwegian krona. Okay, uh, what else, what else? Yeah, so I think that sums it up for our analysis. We know which banks or which central banks are looking to be aggressive. We know which ones are looking to start cutting early. Uh, and basically now it's up to you to use your technicals to, to decide how to play it out going forward. Having said that, thanks for attending uh, this session. It's been a very interesting one. Looking forward to the BOJ uh next 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 week let me go back to that chat here uh no, sorry news we have the boj coming up on when is it uh let's see yeah so on 19th december 19th that's when we'll start knowing uh more comments or more information about if they're going to start having loose uh policy for the and that's going to determine uh, the, but it's 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 shaping out to be a very interesting year. If you missed the rally for USDJPY upwards, you might want to research on the possibility of the rally downwards based on this. So you might start seeing USDJPY going back to where it started. Uh, US oil, I've not really looked at that, honestly. Uh, there was a lot to unpack with uh, the, the central banks this week. So we might look at it next week before the year ends. Uh, do you think the US will fall into a recession? Mm, I don't think so. Not sure yet, but I, I don't think... I mean, data from Nanfarm and these other sources, they have very little signs of a recession. So unless we start seeing the effects of... Uh, the effects of high uh, tight monetary policy being felt uh, now, then that's when we start thinking of it. But I don't think so. Uh, things are looking okay at the moment. Remember to comment on options. Options usually expire on the third week of the month, if I'm not wrong. Options expiry. Let's see if we have anything to look at. Options for the end of the year. I, I, I don't know if we'll have anything. Let's see for the day. Yeah, we have a lot, quite a lot expiring. Oh, okay. So you have quite a number of options expiring. So guys, remember to mark these levels. If you are trading any of the majors, especially 1.095, this one I don't think it's going to get here today. Maybe 1.8 billion here yeah, at 1.08. Uh, yeah, probably these ones. I don't think the Euro USD is going to rally all the way to. 1.095 today. So I think this one is not, it's a no-brainer for now. So just remember to mark these key levels. I think next week will be a better week to look for options because that's when most contracts expire, if I'm not wrong, but I'll have to cross-check that information for now. That's with uh, Apollo. Uh, 
Then thanks for uh very nice especially on that's very informative. Uh thanks uh that's Joe. Uh, please summarize the BOE I for longer fed can't see this message well. Yeah, so if you rewind from where we started, we started by talking about the Fed and how they've changed the tone and we might start seeing hikes uh, and we'll see hikes next year, sorry, cuts next year. And that means a weaker dollar. And then we've talked about the Bank of England and uh, ECB, where we've said for those two, they are looking very adamant on maintaining and we explained why maintaining the rates where they are. And if that's the case, then we'll have a scenario where Europe and England have higher rates than the US. That means GU and EU are going to be in an uptrend. Yeah. Then we went ahead and talked about the inverse relationship with the BOJ and other central banks and looked at other stocks going forward. So I hope that's uh, informative. Uh, options for, for options, just take note of those levels because they usually act as key levels for the market. So, so just take note of them, because it's a whole different session to discuss uh, options. So just take note of the levels for now. OK, uh, have a lovely trading session, and see you next week. Uh, option expiries, uh, they cause volatility at around 6, 6 PM, now that we have daylight saving. So markets are either attracted to these prices or rejected from those prices because these are expiring at those levels. Anyways, um, forexlive.com. Uh, just go to Forex Live and then go to orders. I think you can see all the option contracts expiring for the day. So if I go to Forex Live, uh, just a minute. I go to Forex Live like that. I come here to more and then I search forex orders over here and then each day they will update the contracts so their contracts expiring on 14th there are some expiring on 15th these are option barriers yeah and they usually traded with large institutions so you can always just see what are the key areas or levels you need to be watching out for so this is for expiring 10 a.m 10 a.m new york cut right now is 6 p.m so 6 p.m that's when there's volatility caused by options so you need to take note of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, I think I've ended this like 10 times now. Uh, nice to attend the meeting and the session. It was a very informative one. Also, like reading through the chats. And see you on next Friday's session. where We will try and decode what the BOJ... Is it next week? It should be next week. Yeah, we'll try and decode uh, the BOJ. And if so, do we anticipate a, down, a super downtrend on USDJPY? Okay, having said that, thanks again.